Hi guys, today and the next few days we are going to be talking about shapes and their attributes. We are going to start by reviewing some terms that you may or may not remember from second grade. Um, let's start with the word polygon. A polygon is a closed two-dimensional figure formed by three or more straight lines that do not cross each other. Um, it's probably easier to really understand what a polygon is by looking at some figures and deciding if they are polygons or not polygons. So let's do that. Here are some figures and we're going to take apart the definition of a polygon to determine if these are polygons or not. So the first part of the definition says a closed figure, that a polygon is a closed figure. So I can look at this right now and decide that one of these is definitely not a closed figure. This one is not a closed figure, right? You've got a line and a line and a line, but they don't meet up. They're not joined in any way to close the figure. So this is not a polygon. So I'm going to put an X on it because it is not a polygon. Uh, the next part of the definition says it's a two-dimensional figure, a closed two-dimensional figure. So what does two-dimensional mean in math sense, in math terminology? Um, it means that it is a flat shape. It means that it just has two dimensions for us to measure, right? That it has um, length and width. Um, so if I look at this shape, I've got a length and a width or a length and a height, right? I, but I've only got two dimensions to measure. Uh, as opposed to this cube where I've got length and height and width. I've got three dimensions to measure. So these, out of these shapes, this cube is not two-dimensional. This is a three-dimensional shape. So this is also not a polygon. So I'm going to put an X on that. And then the next part of our definition says that it is formed by three or more straight lines. So in order to be a polygon, our lines have to be straight. So obviously there's one shape here that has a curved line, right? This does not have um, all straight lines. So that is not a polygon either. And then if I look at these last two, um, one, two, three, four, five, it's got five lines. They're all straight and none of them cross each other. So that's a polygon. One, two, three, four. You have four lines. They're all straight. None of them cross each other. Um, and it's a closed shape. That's also a polygon. Okay. All right. Another term, another term that we need to remember um, is the term attribute. An attribute is a characteristic of a figure. So if we think of the word trait, which we talked about a lot this year with character traits, um, trait is a synonym for attribute. So character traits were the characteristics of a character and attributes are the characteristics of a figure. Another term is the term angle. An angle is formed when two lines meet and angles are measured in degrees. So here we have some examples of two lines meeting. Here we have two lines meet, and here is an angle. Two lines meet, and there's a little angle. Two lines meet, and here is a big angle, right? Okay. And then we also have the term vertex. Vertex is the point where two or more line segments meet. Um, think of it as the corner, right? The point. So um, also you need to know that the plural of the word vertex is, we call it vertices. We don't say vertexes, we say vertices. So if I look back up here at these shapes, where, um, where are the vertices, right? So here, these two lines meet here. That's the corner, that's the point, that's the vertex. Vertex and vertex, right? Um, if you have a triangle, where are the vertices? Think about that. Hopefully you 
noticed that there were three vertices, right? Because these two lines meet here, this line and this line meet here, and this line and this line meet here. And even though this cube is not a polygon, it still has vertices, right? Because of the definition of a vertex is just a point where two or more line segments meet. So this cube can have vertices. How many vertices are there in the cube? So the picture of the cube, we could only see, we could really only see seven corners, but there are eight vertices in a cube. And I put this extra little sort of floating one there to show if we rotated the cube where that other one would be, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and really there's one on the other side there. So there are eight vertices in a cube. All right, so when we talk about shapes, like I said, we are going to be talking about the attributes of shapes and we are going to be using the attributes of shapes to sort them, to classify them, to decide what kind of categories they fall into. Um, so one of the attributes we are going to look at is whether or not shapes have what are called right angles. So a right angle is an angle that measures 90 degrees. So if I look at this rectangle and this triangle, they both have angles, right? They both have spots where lines meet. So here I have lines that meet on this rectangle. And then over on my, re on my triangle, I have lines that meet. So I have angles. Triangle has three angles. That's why it's called a triangle. And the rectangle has four angles. But What's different about right angles are, like I said, they measure 90 degrees. And the tool that we use to measure angles is called a protractor. And here is a protractor right here. So if I was going to use this protractor to measure an angle, I would take it and I would line this point up with the bottom corner of whatever it is I'm measuring. And I would line this line up here, the bottom of whatever I'm measuring with this line across where it says zero here. And it says zero on this lower set of numbers. And as you can see, it lines up with 90, right? So it measures 90 degrees. And you can think of a 90 degree or a right angle as making a perfect L kind of makes an L, like if you make an L with your fingers, that's a 90 degree angle. Um, and on shapes, a lot of times we will see if it is a 90 degree angle, you'll see this little L or box, whatever you want to call it, will be put here to show that this is a 90 degree angle. Now, if I go over here with my protractor to this triangle and I line up the vertex, oh, the vertex right here with that point and I line up my line down here and I'm going to use this lower set of numbers since this is a this is an acute angle it's less than 90 degrees right um, this angle is about between 60 and 70 degrees right that's not a 90 degree angle none of the angles in this triangle are 90 degrees. They're all going to be less than 90 degrees. So this has, though, four, this rectangle has four right angles. And I know that it does because these little doodads have been put here, right? Okay, so that's a right angle. Now, for third grade purposes, we do not have to measure things with a protractor and you probably many of you don't even have protractors at home. If you do definitely get it out and um, measure some things and kind of get the hang of it. But one of the things you can do is use something that you already have that you know is a right angle. So a index card is 
a, a rectangle and it's going to have four right angles because it's a rectangle, right? This would be a right angle. Each, each angle on the index card would be a right angle here, 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 and here. A post-it note, right? would be have four right angles here, 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 and it would have one here, although my picture of a post-it note is um, like it's folded up a little bit or curled up. And so what you can do then, and on my next slide, I actually made the index card and the post-it note transparent so you can kind of see when I move them. Um, what you can do is take your index card, with whatever it is you're trying to decide if it's a right angle and line it up just like you would line up your protractor, but line it up and if, it, if your shape lines up with your index card, it's a right angle. So in this case, we can see this is a right angle. But we can also see that this is not a right angle because it doesn't line up, right? It's less than, it's gonna be less than 90 degrees because it is less than lining up with this index card. And the same would hold true for the post-it. And boop. So you can use a post-it at home, you can use an index card, whatever you have, to a sheet of paper, um, a greeting card, any kind of thing that's a, a rectangle or a square is gonna give you a right angle, okay? Another attribute that we're gonna talk about today is parallel lines. So parallel lines are lines that are always the same distance apart and they never touch. And they could travel on forever and they would never touch. And so these two lines, these two lines are parallel. And I know they're parallel because if I took a ruler and measured them, um, if I measured them here, right, it would be about one inch at this section of the line. And then if I took my ruler and I put it all the way at the end and I measured again, they're still about, they're still an inch apart. So these lines are parallel. They're the same distance apart, no matter where I measure them. And if they just kept going, if this line just kept extending off the screen and this line extended off the screen, they would always be an inch apart. That's parallel lines. And that's what it means to be parallel. Um, so those are parallel. Now, these two lines, these red lines, Let's look at these lines. If I measure these lines here, so this is an inch right about there. Uh, that's about a half an inch. So it's a little bit more than half an inch at this part. They're a little bit more than half an inch apart. But if I take my ruler and I come down here towards the end, Well, now I'm almost at a full inch, right? So I can see that these lines, these are not parallel because they're closer together here and they're farther apart here. And if I kept extending these lines, this line, this part of the line, would they would just keep getting farther and farther apart. And this part of the line, they would keep getting closer and closer together until they actually crossed or intersected. So these lines are not parallel. All right, we will talk again later. Goodbye.